The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, I'm Karen. In this episode of The Learning Circuit, I'm going to talk about laser diodes and how they work. Let's start with what a diode is and how it works. A diode is a two-terminal component that allows current to flow in one direction but not the other. This one-way only flow is a result of the interaction between the two regions within the diode. While both regions are made of a semiconductor material, they are each doped with an extra, different material causing it to be charged, the p-type region being positively charged, while the n-type region is negatively charged. Where the two regions meet is called the depletion zone. When a diode is connected to power, the charged materials in either region react. When connected in reverse bias, the charges within each region are attracted to the charges at the terminals, widening the depletion zone, preventing current from flowing through the diode. When connected in forward bias, the charged particles within the diode are attracted to the opposite side terminal, contracting and closing the depletion zone, allowing current to flow through the diode. Laser diodes are a special type of diode with an extra layer. Between the p-type and n-type regions is an intrinsic layer. p-n diodes are made of single-element semiconductors such as silicon or germanium. When the charged particles within a p-n diode recombine, non-visible phonons are released. p-i-n diodes are made of compound semiconductor material such as gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, gallium antimonide, or gallium nitride. While all semiconductors have a crystalline structure that is desirable for conductivity, the compound semiconductor material in pin diodes have a structure that creates spontaneous emissions when positive and negative charge particles recombine. Those emissions form within the intrinsic area as photons, which are seen as visible light. Inside a pin diode, the surfaces of the junction area are polished to a mirror-like finish. This causes the photons to bounce back and forth hundreds of times. The amplified rays collimate and eventually emerge in a beam parallel to the junction. To focus this beam, a lens is usually added to the laser diode. Lenses are how various beam shapes are created. Funny shapes, lines, crosses, or the traditional focused bright spot. Laser diodes tend to be brighter and more focused than LEDs, but both are pin diodes. So what makes lasers so special? Light travels in waves, with the wavelength measured from one peak to the next. Every color of light has a different wavelength. Reds have a longer wavelength, while blues and purples have shorter wavelengths. With laser light, the waves travel together, with their peaks all lined up or in phase. This coherence, combined with the ray collimation, are why laser beams are very narrow, very bright, and can be focused into a very tiny spot. With lasers, the beam color is determined by the semiconductor material used to make the diode. Laser diodes can be found in wavelengths below 400 nanometers in the ultraviolet range, up through the visible spectrum, and continuing above 700 nanometers into infrared wavelengths. Because laser beams are so focused, they can travel very long distances and remain concentrated on a very small area. Lasers being this powerful can be extremely useful, but also dangerous. Lasers can be powerful enough to cause serious eye injury. Every laser product should have a warning label classifying how dangerous that particular laser is. From simply needing to avoid long-term viewing of the laser, up to the laser potentially causing serious skin or eye injury. The safety class is determined by a combination of the laser wavelength, noted in nanometers, and the power of the laser, noted in milliwatts or watts. In general, best safety practice is to never point lasers at your or anyone else's eyes. Laser diodes are fairly sensitive devices, so while they can be found as a standalone component, they are most frequently used in combination with laser drivers and built into modules. Laser modules provide a variety of safety and functionality features, protecting from overheating, current surges, and voltage spikes, as well as providing stable power control over a wide operating temperature range. Laser modules capable of pulse width modulation, or PWM, 
require less heat dissipation, while also being useful for applications that require the ability to rapidly switch the laser output on and off. Lasers that require less heat dissipation can also be made smaller, a convenient feature for SMD components. The term laser originated as an acronym for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. In addition to semiconductor laser diodes, there are a variety of types of lasers. For example, there are gas lasers, like those used in laser cutters or eye surgery, and fiber lasers, which are used in fiber optics. Laser diodes are used in a lot of different products and a lot of different ways, such as laser pointers used as visual tools in meetings in classrooms and as pet toys, for reading and recording CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs, in laser printers, barcode scanners, video game controllers, laser levels for edge detection, all those fun laser light shows and holiday decorations, and so much more. Lasers are super cool, and I would love to see what you can come up with using a laser in a project, be it fun or practical. Post about your projects on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit, and I look forward to seeing your ideas. Happy learning.